Right now we're looking at the New Zealand Rally Championship and we'll feature round two in a moment. Round one was in Otago. Richard Mason was leading the championship. Emma Gilmore was second in Otago. And it's a pleasure to have Emma Gilmore with us this afternoon. Emma, good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your impression of the standard so far this season? Oh, it's fantastic. The New Zealand Championship's got a lot of speed in there at the moment and there's a real depth of field. So, uh, yeah, it's great to be competing there this year. Well, you had three trips to Europe last year, and Finland and Germany, you're in the Rally of Britain as well. What's your impression then? Can you compare the two? What, how different is it? Uh, I think uh, we, we should be very proud of our championship here in New Zealand. We have uh, some great drivers. They're, they're world class and uh, we have the best roads in the world. So uh, I'd definitely rather be competing here in New Zealand than, than overseas. But um, that's with the, with the um, lucky, being lucky to go over there and compete to know that. What were the lessons you brought home from there? Uh, I think just, just make the most of the opportunities we have here because they are great roads and, and we get to do some really good miles and, uh, yeah, make the most of it. Well, you certainly had a good time in Finland. As I recall, you actually set some uh, class fastest times on the stage. Yeah, Finland was just absolutely awesome. Like what you see on TV with the big jumps and, and the roller coaster roads, it's it, definitely is like that and I'd love to go back there and compete again. It was awesome. So what, what sort of driving adjustments do you have to make? Uh, you have to have really good pace notes because you have to know exactly where you're going to be on the crest and, and where the road's going because uh, yeah, to, uh, they're very, very fast roads so to be able to carry the maximum speed you have to carry good speed over the crests. Talk about good pace notes, but perhaps we might come back to that because that applies across the board, doesn't it? It does, absolutely. <laughs> Let's talk about you leaving Rally Otago. You were in second place. What sort of expectations did you have going into Rally Whangarei? Uh, it was a bit of a tough one with Whangarei because we decided to run the lesser fuel up there, um, unlike some of the other competitors. But we still felt that we could be competitive up there if, if we had a good run. And, yeah, it was, it was a real confidence boost coming out of Otago. You talk about being disadvantaged by the fuel. What sort of disadvantage was that? Uh, it's just a slightly lesser horsepower. We, we continue to run the aviation fuel um, as in we were able to run because we we're running with international competitors you're able to run um, higher grade fuel but it's, it's quite a lot more expensive so you know it, it does make a slight difference but um, yeah we felt it shouldn't be too bad. <laughs> and the roads what were you expecting there? Uh, they're great roads they've been used in Rally New Zealand many times and uh, yeah they're fantastic up there as well and uh, I was a bit surprised by how much gravel was on there but um, yeah no they're, they're great roads. All right well we'll talk some more after we have highlighted Rally Whangarei and there certainly are some talk Talking points there with Emma. We'll come back to those. It was round two of the New Zealand Rally Championship. It doubled as the second round of the Asia Pacific Championship as well. It's round two of the Bandar Aluminium Joinery New Zealand Rally Championship, and we head north of Auckland to sunny Whangarei, the gateway to the north of New Zealand. The rally stage is made famous by the Rally of New Zealand, which had its home here until 2005. The rally was also round three of the Asia-Pacific Rally Championship, attracting 11 entrants who would start ahead of the New Zealand drivers. USA driver Ken Block, here to compete in the New Zealand Rally Championship, accepted the challenge at the opening ceremony on Friday evening at the Whangarei Town Basin. So the pressure's on the young drivers in our championship to show their skills in an international arena. All our, our uh, local competitors are all around the same sort of position on the road as us, and that's all that really matters. Um, we're not up here to really dice with the Asia Pacific people. Um, our main priority is uh, the national championship. So, but uh, although I'm saying that, the roads are sort of reasonably gravelly in some of the sections. So being 19th on the road will, will help us. After a close second to Richard Mason in the opening round, Emma Gilmore is brimming with confidence for another top finish. It was a great start to the season, and um, yeah, no, very happy and looking forward to this event. Now this is quite a different event to Otago, obviously um, one thing being that you've had a chance to do your own pace notes. Yeah, it's always something I look forward to because two passes over the stages, it gives you that chance to write your own pace notes and, and they really are driving notes, they tell you how to drive the road and how to drive the road fast, so it's very happy with the job we did and yeah, looking forward to driving on them. And after a debut win in round one for his new car, New Zealand champion Richard Mason hoped to carry his winning form to this rally. It was great to come out with a, uh, an unproven car and, and have a win. So uh, from that point of view, it was the perfect start and one that we've been trying to get for a long time down at Otago. So as the cars leave Whangarei to the stages at Paparoa, let's check out what's in store with our Vantage stage preview. Stage one, Wairere, is definitely a bit of a challenge for starting the morning with. Two pretty tricky bridges that will be slippery if wet, along with a bit of tarmac, which again will be a bit of a challenge if it's wet conditions. Stage two, Bull, has a new start with seven kilometres that hasn't been rallied on before. We then go on to a stage that has been used for many times as part of Rally New Zealand. Stage three, Cassidy, another famous Rally New Zealand road. 
Typical of the roads up north, with plenty of camber, which means you can really throw the car around. We then head back to Whangarei for a short stage around a local park. It'll be a great opportunity to show off the cars in front of the local crowd. And it's a big crowd who have turned out on a fine sunny Northland morning to the famous Haller Bridge at the end of stage one. Tyres will make a huge difference in this rally. Remember, Richard Mason may be the first New Zealand Championship car on the road, but he has 11 Asia Pacific Championship cars sweeping the road ahead. Well, Richard Mason will be pretty happy not starting one on the road. He's starting number 12. But the other concern he's got is the tyres. He's running his new Silverstone tyres, compounds. That could be a problem here up north with the gravel on the road. Once again, starting behind Richard is 2006 Championship runner-up Brett Martin. Martin will be hoping for better luck here after his Rally Otago campaign was spoiled by technical failure in his Evo 9. So Mason stage one time, 11 minutes, 39 seconds. That's 20 seconds slower than his previous stage record on this stage. Lacking a bit of commitment there. Yes, yeah, certainly, yeah. Richard. He looked a little bit casual through that stage. Baby tyres, maybe just getting in the groove early in the morning. Martin's time for the stage, two seconds faster than Mason. So a good sign for the Mitsubishi drivers. On board now with Emma Gilmore and Glenn McNeil. This team currently second in the championship and hoping to go one better on these roads. Well, at Otago, she really performed well. But you can see there the concentration. She's working reasonably hard on the wheel there. And she's looking pretty good coming through here. Oh, she's just missed a gear. Well, an unfortunate start to the day. Her stage time, 11 minutes 52. A full 13 seconds slower than Richard Mason. Sam Murray on the start line. Here is a team who'll be wanting to post a good time here. Sam did well on day one in 2006 until slowed by a puncture. And it's looking good. At the halfway point in the stage, he was fastest and finally posted an 11 minute 28.8. That's over 10 seconds faster than Richard Mason. Dean Sumner, another driver who showed potential in round one before being frustrated with mechanical failure. And Roger, it looks like he's got great road conditions. He certainly has got very good road conditions, but look at the way he's driving, nice and smooth. Sumner just six seconds slower than Murray, so second overall at the moment on this stage. Hayden Patton here to spoil Sumner's party. Faster than him by two seconds, now taking to second place. Dylan Turner next on the road and joined once again by Sandy Bansell in the co-driver's seat. Roger, how long will it take for these two to gel after the break since last year? Well, it's a very difficult rally to come back as a co-driver. You can see Sandy there stuttering a little bit. It takes you a wee while to get back on pace. And three ride Titans in junction. Now, the very important thing here is the driver, Dylan Turner. He must be patient because Sandy hasn't been in the car for quite some time. And his time just three seconds behind Mason. Sixth fastest. So, confirming the results after stage one, Sam Murray, a surprise leader. Three seconds ahead of Padden, then Sumner, Martin, then Richard Mason down in fifth. got a new system on the National Rally Championship. The start has gone all electronic. What it is now is the start marshal pushes a button of the number of the car, goes into a computer system, there's a beam across the front line there which shows when the car leaves the start line. If he has a false start, that'll show that. The co-driver and driver look at this clock and when the clock goes green, they go. On to stage two now, Bull Road. The big one at 36 kilometres and a chance for someone to make a break on the field. Can Sam Murray be the one to do that? Well, his time at 23 minutes, 10.9 seconds, so that's the benchmark. This man, though, chasing hard, Hayden Padden. He told us at the start of the season that he was looking for a top five finish. But after a podium on round one, I think that he set his sights a little higher. Well, he's certainly impressing a lot of people with his maturity and his driving style. Just look at that, nice and smooth through there. 
Well, the team have employed John Kennard, very experienced co-driver, and the co-driver's... Whoa! What has he done here? What has he hit, Darcy? Uh, that looked pleasantly like a pheasant, I believe, Roger. Well, look at him leaning forward. He probably can't see out of the screen. Now, John Kennard has to call him down here. You can see him looking right out of that screen, leaning right forward. Sorry, Bird. Yeah, never mind. His stage time, 23 minutes 12, just two seconds down on Sam Murray. Not too bad, considering... Hayden broke a windscreen. What happened? Oh, burn. Just right the cross the road near the start of the stage and uh, made it very difficult because uh, you can't really see the, uh, the apex of any left-hand corner. So perhaps a little bit lucky there's more right-hand corners than the left-hand. Here's a man on a mission, Dean Sumner. We know from round one that his car has great speed. But can it last the distance? Well, Dean's had a lot of bad luck in the previous rally championships, but hopefully this will be his day. He's certainly driving with a fair bit of commitment. Dean, you've done it blinder. Your first man in 22, 22.59, fastest so far. Oh, neat. <laughs> oh, that's woohoo, wicked happy. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, okay. we work pretty hard in there, so it's good to come away with a stage time like that. Yeah. Looks like your tyres have been working. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, we're trying pretty hard. We've got some um, two new ones in the back, so we're going to put them on the front now. Well, fifth place is not a position that Richard Mason is used to being in, and he'll want to change that. Roger, it looks here like he's driving with a lot more commitment. It certainly does. It's a far six in a row. He's got airborne there. You can actually see the road's nicely swept for him. A defined wheel track through here and a very far section of the stage. improves slightly up one place as time 23 minutes 14.3 but that's still 14.7 seconds slower than Dean Sumner Emma Gilmore's next and she's got a lot of catching up to do here remember only ninth fastest through the first stage which is not good enough if you want to challenge for the lead in these rallies well it's quite a surprise that Emma's off the pace particularly after a performance in Otago but it looks like she's concentrating pretty hard here Emma's fifth fastest on the stage, so she moves up two positions to be seventh. Dylan Turner next on the road, and Roger, he looks fast here. He certainly looks fast, but he also looks very loose. Seven left over small crest, 54 left plus. Repeat, seven left over small crest. Now, that's one of the things Dylan shouldn't be doing, is talking back to the co-driver, because it can put the co-driver off his rhythm. It's something we keep an eye on during the day. Stage three. Cassidy, really just a continuation of the previous stage with very similar road conditions. Dean Sumner really has the bit between his teeth and he's fast through here, 14 minutes, 37.7. Well, Roger, Richard Mason, once again, we see the determination and commitment in his driving. Yes, we see this relaxed style he's got as well. Nice and smooth style. Now, just watching him through here, he's using all the road. And a little bit more. Maybe there's a hint there. There's a bit of a problem with the tyres. In fact, it was Sam Murray who would post the fastest time here on stage three. So having led on stage one, he now puts himself within three and a half seconds of Dean Sumner to be second. On board here with Emma Gilmore and Roger, an ideal opportunity to have a look at the condition of these roads after more than a dozen cars have gone through. Yes, you can see a very clear sweep line here on the road. Well, the previous cars have thrown all the gravel to the side and you're now getting into the hard base. Emma improving here as well, moving up two positions to fifth overall. Hayden Padden, only fifth fastest on this stage, so he drops to third, 14 seconds behind Dean Sumner. Is that a result of the smashed windscreen? Brett Martin now lying in sixth place, having been overtaken by Emma Gilmore. But still involved in a good battle with Dylan Turner, who was in seventh, just three and a half seconds down on Martin. The spectacular Nathan Thomas continuing his good run, eighth overall, just a minute down on the leader. Stuart Taylor, another to benefit on these stages with the road gravel swept off, leaving a smoother road with more grip. Taylor now ninth overall, ahead of Patrick Malley.
driver going backwards in this stage was Ken Block. His engine computer had malfunctioned on the way to the stage and he shed minutes just trying to limp through the stage to the service. He's now 16th overall. So after a quick sprint through a publicity stage, Dean Sumner with a 4.4 second lead over Murray, then Patton, Mason now fourth, Gilmore, Martin, Turner and Thomas. Dean, been a great morning for you. Currently the rally leader halfway through day one. Yeah, I haven't had any problems and uh, everything's been sort of going to plan, but still early days yet. I don't think we're leading by much, only four seconds, and I think Cody's about another six seconds behind that, so it's not a great deal, big margin. Um, hopefully we can hold on to it, but we'll, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I think it's raining up in the hills at the moment, which might suit the Subarus a bit better and make the roads a bit slippery, but we'll, we'll try our best. Sam, this is a big difference from Otago where you struggled there, but here you're really on the pace, second place at the moment. Yeah, it's been a really good morning. You know, it's um, we've made a lot of changes with the rally sprint that we did a couple of weeks after Otago and, and worked hard on the car and, and myself and <laughs> getting some miles back under my belt. So this morning's been good. There's more to come this afternoon. You know, we've just made a couple of little changes now to get the car even better, and I think this afternoon should be really good. Brett, uh, about 50 seconds off the pace this morning. Um, what happened? Um, stage run was good. We had no problems. Seemed to... Took it pretty carefully and yeah, come out quite well. But then stage two, we probably about uh, 12 k's in, we had a spin. We've got back to service and found that the, one of the suspension arms has been pulled out, and yeah, it's just caused the car to move around everywhere. Another driver under pressure, Richard Mason, who was facing unfamiliarity with the compounds of the Silverstone tyres. We were on a bit harder tyre this morning with a cut on it, and um, that didn't really heat up enough for the road. Uh, this afternoon the roads could dry out a bit but we'll go for a softer tyre anyway so that's really where the gamble is is that we could turn up and then it'll be a different story it'll be dry or something and uh, we might go bad again Whangarei was also round two of the Fiesta Sporting Trophy, running under the Group N3 class. And again, it was Mark Tapper leading the way in the opening stages. Auckland driver Kane Barry having to settle for second as he comes to grips with the Ford, although we wouldn't recommend this as a way to get more downforce. Chris Long's gearbox failed on stage one, putting Dermot Melly into third. And when Tapper had suspension problems and lost his brakes on stage three, he dropped to second and handed Barry the class lead. In the Kiwi 2 battle, champion Aaron Cook was out early and Andrew Keeley was the surprise leader in his Honda Del Sol. While Dave Strong found himself trailing the car which he had originally built. Well, I think Dave's struggling with a bit of grip here. You can hear him on and off the throttle. A lot of drivers went for too hard tyre compound this morning and have suffered as a consequence. Reg Cook in his Nissan Pulsar was third. Repeat of the morning stages, Wairere and Bull Road. And once again, Dean Sumner leading the field, fastest on the stage. Well, it's the longest stage of the day, and also this stage is very narrow and tricky. Now, history has showed a lot of drivers have come into a lot of problems in this special stage. Sumner was fastest through Bull Road, but at the end of the stage, big problems for the Rotorua driver, despite leading by 29 seconds. What happened? Oh, it's a silly mistake. I just clipped a bridge, but yeah, I was taking it easy. But as I think my tyre's gone off a little bit, I think that's us for today. How far from the end? Oh, a couple of k's. So Sumner's still leading over Sam Murray, who also hit a bank on Bull Road and had to replace a broken rear suspension arm, dropping him to third. taking the opportunity to move up despite still running with a broken windscreen he moved up to second four left plus in the long four right opens cut 50 k right now just listen to john's pace notes here he's actually using descriptive as well as a number system 
You hear him say K-left again. Now that's what we use as a descriptive for, a, say, a three-left corner. Richard Mason was third fastest through Wairere, but only fifth fastest through Bull Road, so not enough to change his position. Still fourth. 20, three right. Pete, three right. Four left minus. Four right. And he'd have to watch out, because Emma Gilmore was closing. She was 28 seconds behind on stage five, but on the long Bull Road stage, she had the gap down to just 16 seconds. Now, just look at the concentration on Emma's eyes through here. She's really working hard in that car. Concentrating very hard. And after a frustrating morning with his ECU problems, Ken Block was on form here. Sixth fastest in Wairere and then fourth fastest on the next stage. So he claws his way back up the field to 11th overall. Now, Darcy, with this international flavour, listen to the accent of Alex. It's American and Italian put together. Sounds fantastic. And right four in, stay in, hook. Repeat, right four, stay in, hook. So in the top eight, it's Sumner now with just a 29-second lead over Hayden Patton. With just two stages to run, Sam Murray is third. But remember that Sumner is running with a damaged suspension and is sure to lose time. And with just the 23k Cassidy stage to run before the final publicity stage, disaster for Dean Sumner. Fortunately, uh, in the stage just before this one, um, we clipped a bridge and it broke the uh, bottom arm. And uh, so it causes a tow to well, go out and in and out and in, and, uh, steering it from the rear pretty much. Um, I tried to strap it up. Uh, worked good for about... 5k and then the strap broke <laughs> so we've had to withdraw and um, yeah, the boys are bringing out another arm and we're going to fix it and re-enter tomorrow So Hayden Patton finds himself in the lead of this round of the New Zealand Rally Championship with a broken windscreen not a bad effort Roger It's been a great effort, he's also on target to become the youngest man ever to win a national championship day Titans. Three right Sam Murray, second fastest on the stage, now 29 seconds down on Padden in second place. Five right After a slow start to the morning, it all came right for Dylan Turner. He pulled a blinder, 14 minutes 32.2, overtaking Richard Mason in the process and moving into third overall. Yep. Two left in junction, opens 100. Mason found himself with big tyre problems, having chosen to run a compound which was just too soft for the conditions. 120. Richard just said he's got a puncher. You see him working the wheel a little bit harder. So a great opportunity for Emma Gilmore to move up into the top three. Well, the pressure's on Emma now, and it's her chance to get up into the top three. She just hit something there, Darcy. Yeah, Roger, looks like she's uh, broken the suspension, and that will be the end of the day for Emma. She's not happy at all, and I can understand this. She's been trying all day, and it comes to this. I think she's broken a bit more than suspension. That's locked up on the front. Stuart Taylor once again making gains in these conditions. He was fourth fastest and moves up to sixth overall. Nathan Thomas, surprising everyone, fifth overall in his older Evo 7. Into right four. And a chance for Ken Block to make up more places after his poor morning. And he's just gone a little bit wide on that uh, left-hander. He's certainly smoking up the hill here. He's got a bit of pace on. Oh, he's got it all wrong. Over he goes. He got double war near the co-driver's head, three minus twice. The sun. Yeah, 
I couldn't see that well, but let's see if we can get out of here. Okay. And disaster for Richard Mason, who literally ran out of tyres on the way home. We've got six tyres and five punctures on them, and we worked out that we had to do an average of 90 kilometres an hour, including town, to... Um, to get to the next stage on time and we figured that we're going to have to stop and change flat tyres for flat tyres and, and do all sorts of things like that to, to get there and, and we'd never make it so unfortunately we have to pull out. So let's look at the results of leg one. Top 13 headed off by Hayden Patton in the Mitsubishi followed by Sam Murray, Dylan Turner and Nathan Thomas. First female home, Kirsty Nelson in her Subaru. Looking at the overall rally result, Cody Crocker holding a 12.2 second lead over Patton. That result, of course, calculated over the two days. Hayden, congratulations on the victory today. You're the youngest ever winner of a New Zealand Championship round. Oh, it was fantastic. Certainly wouldn't have, wouldn't have expected that um, leading up to this event. So we've just kept our heels clean all, all day. And, um, for, well, unfortunately, a couple of other guys had problems. So, um, but we've been at the end, and, we've, and yeah, the car's going really well. And another man extremely happy with his result is Dylan Turner. Yeah, it's pretty good. We're pretty happy with that. We're, we're a little bit lucky in the fact that a couple of cars fell off, you know, but uh, that's rallying. I guess we took the bridge and a couple of other corners a teeny bit better. So uh, very happy, good good result today. And I think we can push a bit harder too. So tomorrow hopefully we can get the car to go a wee bit better and uh, Sandy's coming on good on his pace notes, so it's looking good for tomorrow. Day two of Rally Whangarei, and once again the weather is perfect for the running of League Two of Round Two of the Vantage Aluminium New Zealand Rally Championship. As the cars head away from the Whangarei Town Basin, let's check out what's in store with our Vantage Aluminium stage preview. Sunday morning starts with a fast blast along Waipu Gorge, another famous Rally New Zealand road, start out on farmland before heading down into the gorge where it tightens up, it is still deceptively fast. The next stage, Brooks, is well known for the jump at the end over the Haller Bridge. It's a pretty challenging bridge actually and it's pretty daunting when you approach it with a big ramp up that means you can get plenty of air for the big spectator crowd that will be there. Millbrook is the next stage, which is quite unlike the other stages in the area with not so much camber, but generally it runs plenty of gravel, so it's a bit of a challenge. The following stage, Waipu Caves, is again more cambered with a bit of a roller coaster finish with big drops and big crests and needs a lot of commitment. Five, four, three, two, one, go. So as Richard Mason sets off at the start of stage nine, just a reminder that today the times for League Two are reset, so it's a whole new day for points in the Vantage Championship. Now Richard will have to rethink his tactics here, particularly tyres and also getting some confidence in these tyres. Dean Sumner was looking so strong until that mishap with the bridge on stage six. So here on leg two, he starts strongly again. In fact, six seconds faster than Mason. Having won leg one, Hayden Patton has plenty of confidence going into today's stages. Roger, there's no reason to think that he can't repeat that success. Definitely not. Yesterday was a great performance. And today, the road should suit him. There's similar roads today. Five right plus. Eight Patton's time, three seconds down on Sumner. Emma Gilmore with a lot to make up after a DNF yesterday. A good start, though. She is fourth fastest. Keller McInnes continued his good run, fifth on the opening stage. But it was close. He was just point one of a second ahead of Sam Murray. And just a second behind Murray, Stuart Taylor in seventh. So not a lot separating these drivers in the early morning. And Brett Martin in eighth fastest on a 7.19. That's just 10 seconds down on leader Sumner. Dylan Turner one second back in ninth, although the pace note's not quite working as well this morning. 100, very long, five left, the Titans late. Into a four fly. You're way too late, man. Come on. But unfortunately, the end of the day for local driver Kirsty Nelson. Her clutch failing in the stage. 
Positions unchanged through stage 10, so on to Millbrook, another former WRC stage. In fact, the stage record is held by Chris Atkinson and Glenn McNeil in the 05 Impreza WRC. So no surprise that McNeil and Emma Gilmore won this stage and set a new grouping record on the way, a 6 minutes 19.5. Hayden Patton just 0.3 of a second behind though. 15. Four right minus Titans three late. Opens. Blip. Four left. Opens and Titans to short three double. Now just listen to John Ken out on the notes here. Very positive. K right. Almost encouraging. You can hear the encouragement in his voice when he's talking to Hayden Patton. That's a big bonus for Hayden. K right. 15. Dean Sumner could only manage third fastest, but it was just 1.5 seconds off the winning time, so he retained his rally lead. Richard Mason, fourth fastest on this stage, so he stayed in third overall, ahead of Gilmore. Seven left and right, short four left plus. 13, four right, and short four left plus open. Brett Martins, fifth at 6 minutes 21.6. It moved him up two places to sixth overall. But Sam Murray in fifth, not so quick today. Maybe suffering from running further up the field where road conditions aren't as swept. Seven, here right six plus, care left five plus, into right five, into left five plus. His teammate Ken Block once again starting slowly but climbing into the top ten on this stage. Half long and left three minus Titan Slade. Repeat three minus Titan Slade. So once again, the top eight. Looks like Sumner and Padden have the edge, and that's possibly due to their running order, letting Mason, Martin, Murray, and Gilmore sweep the roads in front of them. Aaron Cook was briefly the fastest two-wheel drive car before retiring on stage nine, handing the lead to Dave Strong. The Kiwi two car's superior power holding off the Fiestas until the tighter conditions of stage 11 allowed the superior handling of the Little Fords to dominate, and Mark Tapper takes the lead. Kane Barry, the second Fiesta, but running just behind Strong in 14th overall, 6.1 seconds ahead of Andrew Keeley and the other Honda, who in turn was heading off Ridge Cook. Stage 12, Waipu Caves weaves its way through a rocky little gorge before climbing up a power-sapping incline to a three-kilometre stretch of tarmac, then finishing on a real roller coaster ride at the end. So a big challenge, and Roger, Richard Mason running first of the New Zealand Championship cars, will be looking to get a break here. Yes, he's got a reasonably swept road from the cars ahead of him. Looks like Richard's actually got a bit of concentration in driving, working that car around a little bit hard. And oh... Something's gone wrong. Understatement of the afternoon. Obviously some damage to the new BNT okay. Subaru. This is a four left here. Uh, sorry, three left. Four right minus open. There she is. And Mason is now pulling over to let Emma Gilmore pass. And a frustrated Mason will have to hope he doesn't lose too much more time. And seven right. on a charge here. Though remember, she won the previous stage and she'll be looking to make a break here. Emma's just passed Richard Mason, as you saw, so she's going to be on a big charge here. It can be her make or break it here. And she's got it completely wrong here. Oh. And Darcy, just look at that car. That car is a mess. And the safety of these cars extraordinary. Both Emma and Glenn walked out of that smash. What happened? Ah, it's just a simple mistake. I mean, obviously, you can see that it's quite a decent accident, but the, the end cause is, is, uh, is much greater than the mistake that was made. And uh, just probably an error in the notes just on Recky, who's uh, probably caught it a little bit too fast and just come over the crest. And Emma's turned in perfectly on the line to what she thought the corner was. And it was, it was, a, it was a tiny bit tighter. And when, you, when you're that committed over a crest... She went, up, she went off the road basically on the line that she thought the road was going on and just, yeah, so a mistake both, by both of us on the, on the pace marks. Yeah, I mean, it looks, you know, a little bit really bad and like the guy from the ambulance was saying, you know, hey, they went this is a road situation, the person will probably be, be quite bad, but Emma's fine, mate. She's just with a sore neck and stuff like that, just trying to get checked out, but she's fine. So it's a testimony to the safety of the cars. So, stage 12 cancelled due to that crash and drivers given estimated time.
2015 like yesterday you've taken the lead today commanding lead so far by 20 seconds oh cool um, yeah it's a bit unfortunate we're having a bit of a battle with Emma but I, th- I think she's gone off the road and uh, yeah just hope she's okay yeah. and Hayden Patton's right behind you as well he's currently second yeah we're not pushing as hard as we um, were yesterday uh, for obvious reasons just because we um, had to rejoin today and sort of lost a little bit of motivation really and there's no point taking big risks but um yeah, the roads will be swept off this um, the second pass through, and it sort of it was very slippery when we went through the other uh, the first pass. So should be all right. We'll be able to push a bit harder. And after a fine third on League One, Dylan Turner now struggling to stay in the top ten on League Two. Dylan probably hasn't been the best morning. We've got you down in eleventh. Can't believe it. Um, yeah, not a good start. We um, um, just haven't been gelling on the notes, just not, not going good. Um, got better the last couple of stages, but then we had to stop to help Emma with a bit of assistance, and um, that was probably a shame because we're going good on that stage. Or oh, shame, obviously, for Emma, but we're going good on that stage. In terms, do you blame it down on road conditions? No, the roads are brilliant for us. We're just not, not getting the notes good. We, you know, just, just not gelling on the notes, so just one of those things. What are you going to do this afternoon? I go hard because I'm not going to give up. We've had a good good position. We're going to try something here a bit different and, uh, yeah, we're going to go fast, going to go hard. Mark Tapper had plenty of points to make up after his DNF on leg one and at service he was clear leader in the two-wheel drive class. Mark, looks like you're in a fairly good position today. Yeah, we started off this morning and um, pushed along but not taking any risks and got a little bit of a lead and then sort of backed off a bit and then unfortunately that... That last stage was cancelled, but it'll be much the same through the next group of stages. So another repeat of the morning stages. Waipu Gorge and Brooks, a total of 27 k's, and this time the lead cars will have much better road conditions. But Dean Sumner certainly wasn't going to concede anything here. His time through Waipu Gorge, seven minutes, and following up on Brooks with a 10.15. Hayden Padden was six seconds down on Sumner through Waipu Gorge, but won the next stage and closes to within six seconds of Sumner's lead. Well, he's certainly got a lot of confidence, especially from winning yesterday. Just look at these fantastic roads. Long six right line. Now, these roads give drivers, even a driver like Hayden with limited experience, a lot of confidence and they love driving on them. We heard Dylan Turner saying he wanted to put the foot down after service, and he certainly did that. He won Waipu Gorge, just half a second faster than Sumner, and moving him up two places to seventh overall. But at the end of Brooks, over the Hallett Bridge, it all went terribly wrong. Well, what Dylan did there was he went in just a little bit too early, got up on the bank, and over she went. Marcus Gronholm did the same thing a few years ago in the Rally in New Zealand. Sorry. Sam Murray was involved in a big battle with Brett Martin for that third place spot. On special stage 13, it was advantage Murray, but on 14, he had slipped back to fourth. In fact, the gap at the end of the stage, just 1.4 seconds. Stuart Taylor continued to impress today. Fifth overall on both 13 and 14 and just 5.7 seconds clear of his closest competition, Callum McInnes. McInnes certainly stamping his dominance for the rookie title in 07. Nathan Thomas can't be classed as a rookie, but he competed in a Kiwi 2 Suzuki last year, but his form again outstanding. Seventh overall. Ken Block showing no ill effects from his brush for the scenery, and he was up to eighth, just 0.6 of a second behind Nathan Thomas. Right, three minus. Left four plus, over finish, over finish, 200. I know he was going, he was pushing too hard, and he went off. So Dean Sumner continues to dominate leg two of Rally Whangarei, just 5.8 seconds ahead of Hayden Patton, Brett Martin and Sam Murray in that battle for third, followed by Taylor, McInnes, Thomas and Block. Mark Tapper continued to lead the two-wheel drive class, so hopefully he can score some points this weekend. having to settle for the bridesmaids role today but Tapper's challenge came to another early end yeah we've suffered uh, another equipment failure looks like the um, hub's all fallen apart and the wheel parted company with uh, 
only a couple of k's in this stage to go in another stage and we were looking good for the points for the day but that's rallying I guess <laughs> So in only his second rally in the Fiesta, Kane Barry finds himself winning the class and the battle for two-wheel drive honours. Dave Strong was making no mistakes in the Kiwi 2 battle, leading from the first stage of the day to take the Kiwi 2 honours in his Honda Civic. This time it was Reg Cook who was in second, building up a 13 second buffer over the other Honda of Andrew Keeley. Richard Mason lucky to still be in the rally at the end, but still picking up points for ninth place, better than a DNF. Brett Martin's challenge for a podium ended when he lost time with a very unusual problem and dropped to eight. Brett, you had a problem. What was it? Um, about three k's from the end of the stage before, um, steering column fell out. We managed to get it back in, but we only went about two or three k's and it's fallen out again. So we've driven the stage like that. Bit of a shame because you're in such a big battle with Sam Murray. Yeah, it was looking good, but it's the way things go, I suppose. It seems to be the way the weekend's gone. Another good performance from Nathan Thomas, who had taken advantage of the road conditions and pushed hard to finish seventh. With a bruised and battered car, Ken Block finally got to grips with these roads and a sixth overall. Leading rookie on the rally, and now the leading rookie championship, Callum McInnes took fifth place and signalled he's a man to watch. And going one better place than day one, Stuart Taylor bagged fourth place, his best result since Rally Nelson last year. Sam Murray's job a little easier with Martin's demise, but third place on leg two also meant that he would finish third outright in the overall rally. So the battle over who would take the leg two honours down to Hayden Padden and Dean Sumner, and overshadowing that for Padden, the fact that going into these final two stages, he actually held a narrow lead in the overall rally. At stake, a chance to become one of the youngest drivers ever to win an international FIA rally. And after a disappointing day one, Sumner made good with a leg two win. But the big prize still remained for Patton. Cody Crocker, running first on the road, had in his mind the defeat he suffered at the Asia-Pacific Rally in Rotorua last year to Richard Mason. And in the final stage, it was looking like Patton might do it again to him. But the Aussie just couldn't claw back the 30-second lead that Padden had on him. So New Zealand Rally Sport found a new star, Hayden Padden, winner of an international rally, round winner of the New Zealand Rally Championship, and now leading the Vantage Aluminium Joinery New Zealand Rally Championship. Four right plus in, 100 to finish, 2.50 to stop. <laughs> Getting a bit hard to drive now, isn't it? <laughs> Well done, boy. Oh. No matter what happens from here, you've had a stonking good event. Really, really well done. Oh, I'm glad those tyres stayed in here. Your, no your notes are bloody good for somebody who's writing notes for the absolute first time. That's really, really nice good. Job. Thank you. Aidan, congratulations. You've actually won the Asia Pacific round. Oh, it's unbelievable. I just can't believe it. Words can't describe it. And it's just a huge credit to our team and our, and our great sponsors, Pan Direct, B&T, and the, and the Michelin tyres, which have held in there. You've beaten Cody Crocker by 30-odd seconds. Well, I would have never thought that. Like, he's a world-class driver, and he obviously suffered a bit from being first on the road in the morning stages, but even in the afternoon, we've been able to hold our own against him, which is really good. So, Dean Sumner confirmed as the leg two winner at Whangarei by just 5.8 seconds from Hayden Padden. And great to see American visitor Ken Block in eighth place in his Subaru. Disappointment overall for Richard Mason, only managing ninth place, struggling to defend his national title. And in the overall Rally Whangarei results, Patton the winner over Crocker, 24.4 seconds the margin. Sam Murray, a deserved third place, ahead of Yanisagawa, then Taylor, Thomas and McGuinness. So a well-deserved champagne shower from his fellow competitors. For New Zealand's Hayden Patton. Let's take a look now at overall points for the Rally of Whangarei. Hayden Padden scoring 102, pushing him into the lead of the Vantage Aluminium Joinery New Zealand Rally Championships. Richard Mason hanging on to third position by the skin of his teeth. Kane Barry leading the Group N two-wheel dive drivers on 118 from Dermot Malley and Mark Tapper. 
and the rookie driver's points, Callum McInnes takes the cake in his Subaru, followed by Kirsty Nelson and Alistair McRae. Next up in the Vantage Aluminium Joinery New Zealand Rally Championship, it's home turf for Richard Mason. It's Rally Wairarapa, based in Masterton. Stonking, there's a word you don't hear very often. A superb job from Hayden Patton, especially as he drove much of day one with a broken windscreen. But our guest this afternoon is Emma Gilmore, who was on a charge before her spectacular accident. Now, Emma's co-driver, Glenn McNeil, gave a very good description of what happened. But, Emma, what do you remember of it? Uh, yeah, I remember him thinking that, came over that crest, thinking everything was OK, and then I realised that, uh-oh, we've run out of road. And um, I still actually thought we were going to make it because the edge of the road looked like it had a bit of ground oh, you underneath it. you are such a driver, it. aren't you? I, I still thought, thought we were going to make, make it. it. I did. I had my boot up it. But then as the car sort of started to tip, I thought, mm-mm, this isn't good, and shut my eyes. <laughs> What's your first recollection of it? Uh, sitting on the bank after. It's like I remember the rolling, and, uh, and then I remember the... Um, just sitting on the, gra on the grass bank afterwards. Sure, we've just seen that shot of you closing your eyes there and there's, there's the car there and it's looking pretty <laughs> ugly. <laughs> yeah. So you sat down with Glenn. Have you worked out what happened? Yeah, we just, I, I, it was an error we made in the pace notes. I'd concentrated too much on the crest coming into the corner and, uh, and just didn't pay enough attention to that, to the corner. And it's, it is quite difficult when you're driving at 60 kilometres an hour to, to pick up where the car's going to be getting light and that sort of thing, but it was just an error that I made. Has it knocked your confidence? Uh, it, was, it was tough getting to the next event three weeks later, but in saying that, I probably wasn't quite over the concussion uh, either, so uh, I don't think it will. I think um, it'll... Once we've done some testing in the new car, it should be all good. It is difficult, though, once you've had concussion. It's not one of those things you can easily put to one side or you're even sure whether you're, you're fixed or not. Yeah, it's not until you've probably you've come right that you realise how far you've come and how not right you were when you, know, you just had it. Well, we're just looking at shots of you driving. Now, put us in the car. Emma, what goes through your mind here? Uh, it's basically the, the driving just comes naturally. Like, you're, you're focusing on what the co-driver's telling you. Um, you'll be thinking about what gear you're in, what speed you should be carrying through the corner. Um, you try and avoid the bridges and don't drive into the always, end of them. <laughs> yeah, don't hit anything. That's don't always good advice. Anything. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but you, you, you're judging the road surface as well and looking at where you're going to have grip and where you know the braking might be affected, etc. Just going back to the crash for a moment, you actually advertised bits of the car on Trade Me, didn't you? <laughs> How yeah. successful was that? Uh, it was actually very successful. We uh, sold all the panels off the car because they weren't much use. They sort of became sculptured art, I guess. But um, I had fantastic support after the accident, just uh, nationally and locally. The Dunedin community was just awesome. And you have Rally Hawks Bay to look forward to now. What are you going to be doing between now and then? Uh, we'll go testing with the new car uh, in a couple of weeks and uh, just make changes so that it, it feels a lot like my old car. And uh, yeah, then we'll hit the ground running at Hawks Bay. Fantastic. Well, I wish you the very best. You came fourth last year, didn't you, in Hawks Bay? So yeah, thanks. So. <laughs> with the best of luck to uh, improving on that when you get to it in about a month. Cool. Thank you. All right. Emma Gilmore, yes, good luck for the rest of the year. Now, 20 days after that big crash, Emma was back in action in round three of the championship, and you can see highlights of Rally Wairarapa next week.